Here we go, EBC brakes, Superbike race number one. When those lights go off, clutches are out. Who's gonna get the launch? A good one from Garrett Gerloff. Tony Elias, number 24, your championship points leader. Trying to reduce the amount of damage being done by Cameron Bobier, his championship rival. Plus, we know Garrett Gerloff still mathematically in the mix as he's 56 points back. As they come through the final corner, Garrett Gerloff at full lean angle, twist the grip. Head down, and it's going to be Garrett Gerloff with race number one. Son of a AMA FIM North American Road Race Championship, round nine to 10 for 2019. We're at the Championship of New Jersey in Millville at New Jersey Motorsports Park. Hello everyone and welcome to the broadcast. My name is Greg White, standing alongside Jason Pridmore, who's won two world titles in his day. Now we're getting ready for the EBC Brakes Superbike race number two from NJMP. Now Jason, yesterday was mm, very interesting. Crazy day, Garrett Gerloff's picking right up where he's been leaving off lately. Uh, just gets to the front, dominates the race. Looked like he just had a little bit over the rest of the field, and there was just nothing they could do with him. Yeah, so Garrett Gerloff won, what, his fourth race in six tries. But in terms of championship, we saw something extremely unusual, which was Tony Elias finishing fourth in the races he's finished this year. It's his only time off the podium. And it wasn't just a close fourth. It was a distant fourth, a long way back. He had people, Jake Lewis and Matthew Skoltz, breathing down his neck that could have taken more valuable points away. Up in the front, though, Garrett Gerloff was beating Cameron Bobier, Tony Elias' closest rival. So there's a lot of things going on in this championship still. Now, Jason, the question is, do you think that Tony Elias and his team can make up that gap? It was, what, 14 seconds back to him? Never want to say never with that team, but I think it's going to be hard to find 14 seconds overnight. It was an exciting race. Let's take a look at the highlights. Fresh off his race two victory at Pitt Race, championship points leader Tony Elias has finally going tough here at New Jersey Motorsports Park. Going over things with his team before race one, they came up with a plan, but he was never a factor in the race as it was all Yamaha's up front. Yamaha teammates Cameron Bobier and Garrett Gerloff would dominate this race. JD Beach on the attack performance Yamaha R1 would show early. As the race started to funnel its way down towards the finish, we saw shots being taken. As they went into turn one, Garrett Gerloff fires the first one up underneath Cameron Bobier, only to find his teammate going back up underneath them as they rolled up over the top of turn two. Late in the race, Cameron Bobier took another shot as he went up underneath Garrett Gerloff in turn one, only to find his teammate do the same thing back. But that gap that you see pulled was never clawed back by the defending national champion, and Garrett Gerloff, Gerloff goes on to win his fourth race of the year. Unbelievable for Garrett Gerloff, and in terms of the race finish, here's how it played out. It was Gerloff, Bobier, J.D. Beach, and for the first time this season, Tony Elias, when he finishes a race, is off the podium and only collects 13 points. So in the championship hunt, that started to change things slightly. It was 35 points coming in to this weekend. Now, Jason, it's 28, and Gerloff only 44 points back. Yeah, it's all got closed up at the top, and I think that the concern when you look at our results sheet there wasn't so much that he finished fourth and he only got 13 points. It was how far back he was. 25 seconds back, Greg, is a mile back. And the thing that he's got to worry about is other guys getting close and taking more points away. Yeah, well then after the race, Hannah had a chance to catch up with a couple of the riders in Winter Circle. Garrett, you have been on a huge hot streak. What has kind of attributed to that confidence to allow you to carry the momentum into the next round? Well, I mean, like I said before, I've always known I can do it. And I, I've always had the confidence, but you know, for sure, back to Laguna, just getting it done has given me a lot of confidence. And I mean, after uh, race two at Pittsburgh, I'm more motivated than ever to, uh, to just do what I can and, and uh, show that I got it, you know? So uh, that was a long, hard race, but the Dunlop tires held in really well. Uh, they were perfect, just sliding around a little bit, but just the perfect amount. And uh, man, I'm feeling good. I feel relaxed out there. It was awesome riding with uh, my Yamaha Accidents uh, service, financial service. Uh, Monster Energy, uh, Graves' teammate over there, Cameron, he was riding really good and pushing me the whole time and, you know, uh, kind of lucky. I feel, I'm glad I didn't have to battle in the last couple of laps. Uh, you know, I felt good, but I'm glad I was able to kind of just have a little bit of a, a cushion, you know, so. Hats off to my teammate, Gary. He rode, he rode so good uh, in that race. He had a little pace on us in practice. 
Uh, but I felt really good. Like we made a couple changes going into the race and early on I felt really good on my bike. And uh, then I started running into little troubles, you know, here and there. I made a... Uh, I had a couple close calls in the front end and made a couple mistakes and we were kind of yo-yoing and I close up, make a little other mistake, but uh, like I said, hats off to him. He rode incredible and uh, it's great to have two monster entity Yamalu Yamahas up on the on the box, one, two, and uh, we did close in some points on the, on the title chase, so it's not over yet. Oh yeah, so much riding on the race here today as we only have three left in the season. More Moto America after this. Welcome back to the championship of New Jersey here in Millville. Moto America championship for 2019 is EBC Brakes Superbike race number two. Coming up real soon as motorcycles making their way to the grids. Let's get down to Hannah. You may notice a missing number 31, Garrett Gerloff from the grid this afternoon, had a pretty bad crash in this morning's warm-up, so he, unfortunately he will not be racing today. I want to touch base with teammate Cameron Bobier. Cam, taking your teammate out of the equation for this afternoon's race, how does that kind of change the dynamic and how the results could potentially go? Yeah, I don't know. I've, I'm First of all, I'm bummed for Garrett. He's been riding incredible all weekend and, uh, yeah, had a, had a pretty good get off this morning so I'm glad you know I'm glad he's relatively okay hit his head pretty good but uh, yeah I mean I'm just gonna try to hold it down for the Monster Energy Yamalu Yamaha team uh, my bike's feeling pretty good today and uh, yeah gonna gonna see what we have for the guys thanks Cam best of luck out there well Jason I, I mean if you look at the results from yesterday this has a lot of potential to be a Cameron Bobier runaway it but does. there was a lot of work done overnight the question now becomes who has got the pace to try to close the gap down from yesterday to Cameron Bobier today? Anybody that sticks out from the times you saw in warm-up this morning? Well, in warm-up this morning, Greg, the only other person that got into that minute 20 range was Jake Lewis, I believe. He did a 20.9 uh, this morning along with the two Yamahas. Um, so Cameron right now, he, you know, how much of a, of a gap has Matthew Skultz possibly made, J.D. Beach overnight, those kind of things. Conditions are a little bit different this afternoon than they were this morning, but it's going to be difficult, I think, for people to go with Cam. All right, let's get down to Hannah. Tony's just getting a last-minute stretch in here. This weekend hasn't gone exactly according to how, how you wanted it to go. What changes, if any, have you made to the bike to try and get you back on the podium today? Uh, well, yesterday we, we were lucky. We saved really good points uh, we started the uh, with with uh, a lot of difficulties we tried everything but nothing works also in the race what we chose yesterday was was not the best but I did uh, all my best uh, with what we had so but today is different the bike it proved a lot this morning uh, we made a couple of changes for this race I feel confident uh, let's see if, if the bike is a little bit better and yesterday we were uh, one second from from Garrett and Cameron. Today we are 0 0.3. Let's see if we, if, if with what we did, we we found this extra two two tenths, and then uh, stay there, play, um, try to 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 be smart. Thanks, Tony. Thank you. I think that's all. Really, what he can do is just play it smart right now with a 28 point lead. In the no question. Yeah, he's got to try to get out of here. Uh, you know not write the weekend off, but get as many points as he can. Uh, this morning, he, he worked to the last possible minute. We actually had a red flag for that incident this morning with Garrett Gerloff, and when Tony went back out, Elias went back back out, he was working to the very last lap. I mean, he came down the front straight away, head down on the checkered flag lap, because you could tell that they probably made small changes even then. So he's been working hard. That whole team has been. Well, still to come, our 23-lap main event from New Jersey Motorsports Park. We expect fireworks here on this one. So don't go anywhere. Welcome back to New Jersey Motorsports Park. EBC Brakes Superbike race number two. Inching closer to this race start, Jason. And we've had some changes in terms of the grid from yesterday because we have a couple riders that are not going to be on the grid for this race. 
Yeah, I think that when you start looking at the starting grade, Greg, I mean, Cameron Bobier is going to be on that front row alongside Matthew Skoltz and J.D. Beach. You know, when you look at that front row and you start thinking about who could possibly challenge, I'm looking at that number 85, Jake Lewis. He was so close to getting on the podium at Pittsburgh. This morning, he was out following J.D. Beach around a little bit, and it didn't look like there was much between them. I know J.D.'s probably riding high off his podium yesterday, but Jake Lewis, Tony Elias, and Kyle Wyman there rounding out row two. Look for the 85. I think he could be a player today. Josh Heron back there on row three alongside Jake Gagne. Those two had a good race yesterday. David Anthony outside that row three. Then we're going to go back to Cam Peterson. Um, Travis Wyman taking a little break away from Superstock 1000 to join us here in the Superbike class. And he will be alongside Max Flinders. And there on row four. Jason not starting this race. Obviously, you heard since the top of the show. There's no Garrett Gerloff, but also Sam Verderico yeah. on the 17 had a big incident. He had in. a crazy crash this morning, for those that didn't see it. And I've had one similar that was very unfortunate. But on an outlap, it looked like he had something maybe go wrong with the front brakes, and it literally launched him up over the top. So we're hoping that Sam's doing okay. Looked like he hurt his arm in that accident. Um, did see him walking around and all that, which was nice, but it was violent. So Matthew Skultz with a good position. He's got a good launch and a good view into turn number two. The question is, what can he do with that race start? Yep. So Jason, looking at the, the depth of this field, and obviously with Garrett Gerloff, who has been the standout, we have J.D. Beach, who is continuously working on the setup of his motorcycle. A lot of that having to do with the body position. One of the things I talked with J.D. Beach about, Jason, was chatter. The mm -hmm. attack performance Essendon Racing Yamaha has had chatter problems all year long. So I asked J.D., now you've had a full race distance on it here at New Jersey Motorsports Park. Did the chatter come back? He said, no, it didn't. Great. So what that's allowed them to do then is go, great, we've got that problem solved for this day, and now we can start making other changes to the motorcycle. Tweaks, right? So yeah, exactly, <laughs> to make it a little bit more rideable for J.D. Beach because it was really those latter stages of the race. So here's what happened yesterday with J.D. Beach as he describes it to me. Jason, you're going to understand this one for sure. So what he was saying was, as he was racing with the two leaders, with Garrett Gerloff and Cameron Bobier, as he would initiate throttle, the bike would squat too much and start to spin. So what he decided to do was ride down the edge of the tire for longer and then carry more corner speed to the roll corner through. and then get on the gas a little bit later. But what ended up happening was he wore out the edge grip on the tire, and that was the last 10 laps. So everything they had done this morning was to solve that problem. Yep, well, and the thing is, is that when you do that, you have to have a bike that's capable of rolling through it. And there were some times over the course of the weekend at the beginning of the first session, and again, talking to Richard, uh, being able to talk to Richard, it'd be interesting to see what they've done with gearing on that bike, because the bike was in such a higher rev uh, in the first practice. The bike had more revs, it seemed like, to me than the second one, and he's continued to go uh, even further than that, watching this morning and listening to where he's shifting and how he's shifting. It's a lot more like that bike on the pole position. So in the championship, of course, was Garrett Gerloff. He was sitting third, and we told you that Garrett, this was the incident this morning, Jason, just oh, you know, yes. to analyze this. We've talked about it all show long, but tell us what happened oh, here. here. This is when you get a lot of confidence, and you can see he's coming out of turn 3C there, and that's off camera. If, you, if you've seen our track hotspots at all this weekend, I've marked that as a turn where if it just goes a little bit wrong, you can see how little that bike slid, but it spit him off on the inside. So it's kind of a high side from the inside. You're going to see here in a minute how little the movement is. He's going to get himself back over to the right. He's looking through the corner. He's probably dialing on a lot of throttle right now, and it's just going to be the littlest bit of a movement that's going to buck him up out of the seat, and you lose your balance, and you can see, unfortunately, Garrett hit his head pretty hard on the pavement on that first hit. And uh, that was the main concern, and that's the reason why he's not riding with us today. Yep, and Garrett doing the right thing and telling his team after that incident that he wasn't feeling well, so he went to the hospital to get a scan. And so we wish the best for Garrett Gerloff in that one. But if you're just joining us, and that's the first time you're seeing that, that's why we don't have the number 31 in this race. Hopefully, we'll get to see Garrett Gerloff finish off the season as strong as he has been at the final race of the season. Warm-up lap. What does the 33 of Kyle Wyman have in store? They made a lot of changes to that Ducati. Kyle Wyman, of course, out of New York on that Lions Fuel Blackberry Silence entry machine. Jason, the strategy was to soften the motorcycle up, both yep. at the front and the rear for the Ducati. He felt like he just had it too stiff get it a little bit more in the stroke to get more feel. A little more compliant maybe, maybe something that's going to make it to where when the bike goes over those bumps, it doesn't give him that harsh feeling. Bike will roll through those a little bit more. There's a good tight shot of Josh Heron, who 
is going to be, uh, he's, you know, we'll see interested to see if Josh made any changes to try to get himself a little further. Both the Oshpikes have just been struggling a little bit this weekend, obviously. They have, and with Heron, what was interesting in the conversation we had in the transporter a couple of hour ago, hours ago, I said, can you analyze, like, what's going on? And he said, the only thing I can really tell you is that I get on the motorcycle, I feel comfortable on the motorcycle, and I feel like I put together a good lap. I come around, and the lap timer says, nope, wasn't a good <laughs> lap. And so, yes. you know, when you're in that mode, Jason, how difficult is it to climb yourself out in an accelerated program like we have in these two-day events? It's frustrating. It is really, really frustrating. So I feel for Josh, for sure, because I've been in that position where you think, oh, man, I nailed it. I did this and that, and then it's slower than your fastest lap you've done all weekend. You think, wait a minute. But this is also a track where you look at the amount of the lap time, and it's only a minute 22, 23 seconds long. The harder you try, the slower you go sometimes at a place like this. Let's get down to Hannah with our Cycle Gear last minute report. I just wanted to point out to everyone that our two championship rivals, Cameron Bobie and Tony Elias, are both on the same tire combination again today. That extra soft front, extra soft rear. Keep an eye out for those green bands. Greg and Jason, I know you're up in that nicely air-conditioned booth, but it is getting really, really hot out here. How is that going to affect tire longevity in this race? Well, Hannah, thank you. That, that's a good question. I think we'll have to see how that plays out from about mid-race distance on, how that, the, how that works for the tires. It's time for EBC Brake Superbike race number two here at New Jersey Motorsports Park. Revs are up in this one, and now the launch. Cameron Bobier got a great one. Coming off the line, Tony Elias wheel in the air, the number 24 middle part of your screen. When they settle into it, is it going to be Kyle Wyman? No, it's going to be Matthew Skultz trying to go around the outside, but he loses position to Wyman. Oh, no, oh, they're side they're by side. They're so close. That's going to help Jake Lewis. Jake Lewis trying to make a run on those guys down into turn three, and he's going to make that pass. Kyle Wyman trying to go the long way around, and Jake Lewis going to squeeze him out. Tony Elias is the guy that loses out a little bit as Matthew Skultz gets bucked up out of the seat. So Tony Elias is just shuffled back in the mix. Great launch, great start by Jake Lewis on the M4X Star Suzuki number 85. And just right now, Greg, you look in there, there goes Kyle Wyman as Kyle Wyman powers past Jake Lewis off down into turn six. So we got a Ducati running in third spot now. Kyle Wyman, no stranger to a podium in the Superbike class here at New Jersey Motorsports Park. Not happy at all with his result from yesterday. Back on it as Cameron Bobier leads J.D. Beach. What a different race we have today. All eyes on Tony Elias as he settles into his pace. Tony understands it's a long, long race. 23 laps, here comes Bobier Through the fast final corner onto the front straightaway comes the Monster Energy Yamalube Yamaha factory racing machine. You can see that little bit of a gap that's already been spread out between Bobier, J.D. Beach, have just started to gap Kyle Wyman. Now, the thing I'm looking at on Kyle Wyman's bike there, Greg, is this is the best I've seen it look, especially mid-corner at full lean angle. It looks like he has a lot more confidence, does Kyle. Look at how that bike's turning as well. So that Ducati looks very, very racy right now. I'm interested to see how that goes as the tires go, as Matthew Skultz is making a bid on Jake Lewis, not quite close enough. And right behind him, he's got Tony Elias going to try to take a shot at him, but he's not quite close enough to Matthew Skultz to make that pass stick. Jake Lewis wheel in the air on his privateer Suzuki GSX-R1000 being hounded by a privateer Yamaha R1 Superbike Westby Racing's Matthew Skultz. All the while, that factory machine of Tony Elias, your championship points leader, buried. But like I said, it's a long race, and Tony knows exactly what he's doing and when he needs to make the moves. You're, you're exactly right. Tony Elias is sitting back there right now thinking, OK, I got two guys in front. I got a Ducati. That we're going to have to see how that plays out as far as tire wear goes for Kyle, because right now his bike looks incredible to me, the best I've seen it. Let's see what they do on their first real flying lap by, because Wyman hasn't really let these two guys get too much further out in front of him than they were the lap before. 120.7, the fastest rider on the racetrack is J.D. Beach, the number 95 with the fastest lap. There goes Skultz, the number 11, around Jake Lewis. Yep, and Matthew Skultz that time through at a 21.4. He goes past Jake Lewis. Jake Lewis is at a 21.5 this morning. Lewis went 20.9. So the first two guys have been able to dip themselves back into the 20s. Kyle Wyman with a 21-1, very fast. But Matthew Skultz could be the guy that we got to look out for, Greg, in making his moves to the front as he's already closed that gap down to Kyle Wyman. 
So Skultz looking for a way around the Ducati, trying to make this another one of those Yamaha 1-2-3 finishes. But Wyman doing a great job on that Lion Fuel Blackberry Silence. KWR Ducati, the only Ducati in the field. An effort that he came, just decided to bite off and go for it right before the season started. That's a big bite. And, he's, yeah. and that kid has worked very, very hard to put that program to together. And he's done a really good job this year with it. Wyman trying to keep it up front. So many laps to go in this one as he settles into his pace. Onto the front straightaway in a couple of corners. And that Ducati with a lot of legs under it. JD's Here we go. got a run. JD has a run, and so does Skultz on Kyle Wyman. We're going to look at both these. JD was up, up, up alongside. Matthew Skultz is up alongside. There it is. And the we'll pass make the pass. Third. So Skultz with a good run on the back of Wyman. Gets himself into a good position. A couple of fifth place finishes for Skultz and the Westby Racing Team. And they're looking for more from the South African. So he goes up to third spot. Utilizing what seems to be a very Yamaha friendly racetrack. Last split, fastest of the race for Matthew Skultz. Fastest of the field, I should say. So he was very quick to that last split. and Getting that draft as well off that Ducati before he made that pass into turn one. Let's see if he can try to close this gap down at all. This morning in talking with him, he felt that he could get himself into the 21s very, very consistently for a long period of time. He's gone 21-1, which is quicker than he went this morning. Skultz, one of six podium finishers in the ABC Break Superbike class this year. Two second place finishes and a first. Obviously looking for another race win in the class. The last time by, J.D. Beach had such a big run on Cameron Bobier as they came down the front straightaway. He was able to get just up alongside, wasn't able to get past. This is good stuff from J.D. Beach that we're getting to see on that attack performance R1. Live championship points, lower right hand corner if it finished like this. Long way to go in this one. Across the line, Bobier, 121.5, a 21.6, but a 21 flat for Skultz. So Skultz was able to take a half a second out as now M4X star Suzuki's Jake Lewis goes by on the 33 of Wyman. So Lewis trying to not let Skultz get too far out in front of him. And a lot of the time that Matthew Skultz made up on the leaders was in that second split, Greg. So we'll have to keep an eye and see what Matthew's doing. As you can see, he is visibly running down Cameron Bobier and J.D. Beach. Tony Elias was already trying to set up a pass there between turns four and five, but got bucked up out of the seat just a little bit. So he's going to spend a little bit more time behind Kyle Wyman, who in turn is keeping his eyes forward looking at Jake Lewis right now. Championship points leader, the number 24 in sixth place. That points haul would be 10 points only for Tony Elias. He's looking for a way around Wyman as Wyman trying to protect that inside line. To the front, Cam Bobier has got J.D. Beach all over the back of him. Beach, of course, with a win already this year. A lot of people were surprised how early in the season Beach was able to do it. I cannot believe how much Tony Elias is struggling through that left. You can see the Ducati and the Suzuki of Jake Lewis visibly pull away. Cameron Bobier makes a small error Coming out of that last corner, I believe we're going to have a pass for the lead to turn one. As you can see here, J.D. Beach has taken the lead. Matthew Skultz has chopped that lead down to 1.2. It was as much at 1.9. Oh, and Beach just checked out. Yeah, it almost looks like Cameron had a little bit of a problem or maybe got, I don't want to say got caught into a false neutral, but it almost looked like something like that. Like he was almost getting it into a gear as he exited turn one. So Bobier in his bid for this national title, trying to retain it, making mistake after mistake, race after race, is now J.D. Beach. To the point. Here's a look on board. See, he's going to get out just a little bit wide, gets the bike moving around. You're going to see J.D. Beach on the right-hand side of our screen go right by him. Now we're going to look as they go in here. There's a bump as you enter turn one, but you're right, Greg. There was a bit of a gap there. We see that Tony Elias now has gone through on Kyle Wyman. So Tony getting a couple of points back from Wyman in this one. He's got another Suzuki ahead of him. A privateer Suzuki, M4X star Suzuki. And this is what we have really seen is the emergence of the GSXR 1000 in privateer trim, racing it up with the factory bikes in the early stages of these races recently. Yeah, no, there's no question. And Jake Lewis doing a very good job. But look at this gold number 11 of Matthew Skultz. He is literally closing down on our defending champion. And you're right, Greg. J.D. Beach is getting away, 121.5. It wasn't like the laps were extremely fast, but 21.5 and Matthew Skultz does a 21.2.
to, cons to continue to chip away at these leaders. 17 laps to go in this one. It's J.D. Beach, Cambobie, and Matthew Skoltz out front. This one far from over. Cameron Bobier looks to have some pace at the moment, Jason. It's, it's kind of accordion back and forth, yeah. but he's closing the gap down for the moment. But J.D. Beach, his bike looks the best I've seen it. It does. Since before halfway point of the season right now. Yeah, and you know, the thing is, is there were some, some nice changes made after that first session. Yesterday, we go a little bit further back. Fourth and fifth place here are those Suzuki's of Jake Lewis, Antonio Elias. But uh, the, thing, the thing I'm looking up front at right now between those three guys is you're exactly right. That last split seems to be hurting Cameron a little bit. So we're going to keep an eye on see what's going on there. So Lewis trying to hold off the advances of Tony Elias into the last bit of New Jersey Motorsports Park. Jake Lewis, so much talent and still in the mix. But J.D. Beach. Onto the front straightaway, privateer, Yamaha R1 horsepower versus factory horsepower. And they looked relatively evenly matched in that one, Jason. And yeah. there goes Tony, up the inside on Lewis. That'll be for fourth spot. So Elias keeps moving forward. One thing we know about Lewis is he has a look over his shoulder from the onboard camera. If he has an opportunity, he'll fight back. No question, yeah, Jake's got a lot of fight in him, and you can see Matthew kind of bridged that gap, and now these guys have just pulled a little bit further away from the number 11 and Matthew Schultz. And, you know, I think that if Matthew can get up on the back of them and just kind of sit and watch and then let this middle part of the race go, he's under no threat again from people behind the first split that we have pop up on our screen. All three of our riders are in the 18-1, 18-2 range, so... We're going to continue to see that. I mean, what Matthew Schultz has done, even bridging that gap from 1.9 down to 0 0.9, 0 0.7 to Bobier that last time by. What I like we, have, about, we haven't seen that too much this no, year. And what I like about what I'm seeing from Skultz, Jason, is there doesn't seem to be the, the hurry or the franticness right, right now to try to close right back up onto the back wheel and start making passes. I'm not saying that he's on cruise control mode, but definitely if Matthew Skultz has a little bit more in him, He's pacing himself, and yeah. that's what I like to see. Yeah, I think that for Matthew, he would love to just be getting a little tiny bit closer than he is right now, but he's doing exactly what he told me he could do earlier. He said he felt like he could run consistent 21s. In fact, that lap there, 21.6, was the fastest lap he ran this morning, and he's already gone 21 flat in this race. So now we're at that stage where Cameron Bobier is sitting, kind of watching what J.D. Beach is doing in front of him, kind of getting a gauge on places that he can plan a pass, plan his thoughts of, can I go quicker? Can If he starts to see this pace drop back into the 22s and Bobier feels like he can still strongly do 21s, you'll see him try to make an effort at J.D. Beach. The question we all have for Cameron Bobier is what kind of motorcycle is he riding right now? Meaning, one of the issues that they've had since they arrived here at New Jersey Motorsports Park, they were trying a new bit on the front end, and Cameron just kept saying, I was losing the front, I'm losing the front, I'm losing the front, and I keep having to save it with the throttle. So did they go back, or is Cameron trying to get used to this setup of the front end of the motorcycle. It's it's hasn't been decided yet in terms of if he's gonna keep it or not, but it's been what's been plaguing him yesterday in practice and qualifying and in the race, and this morning as well. They thought they had a fix, but he said no. But Cameron right now, it looks like the front end's planted, yeah. at least in that corner. Well, you can see two different lines there. JD runs it in and squares that up a little bit. That's why you see Cameron close it up so much in the middle. Doesn't look like Cameron loses much on the exit. This is where we're gonna see now. JD runs just a tiny bit wide at the middle, at the apex of that corner but it doesn't really look like Cameron has much for JD as they go down into turn one. What you just saw was the pit board. It's the only communication that crew has to Ryder when he comes across the line, and that was JD Beach's pit board signaling to him that he's in position number one, and that 0-0 zero, zero you saw means that he's got nothing of a gap. He's got a Ryder right on the back of him. Well, now we're back. Now we're kind of getting into that, creeping into the higher 21s, 21-8. That time for JD Beach, 21-9 for Matthew Skultz. 21-6 for Bobier. So if Bobier feels like he can run low 21s, look for something to happen here in the next two, maybe three laps. But right now, J.D. Beach doing a tremendous job controlling the pace at the front. That's the telltale sign. Watching these lap times, if they start to drop, J.D. Beach becomes vulnerable. That's really the question because since they've had such issues with chatter, getting a full race distance out of these tires at this pace and at as well as this motorcycle is feeling, can be, I guess, uh, uncharted territory for him at the moment. No, no question. 
This sector here is the sector that Matthew Skultz had been struggling with the most, and it looks like he's made some improvements to at least get himself a little bit closer. You can see, Greg, he's rolling around very nicely in the inside of that turn. But man, I tell you, as that rider in third, you wish you could just get a tiny bit closer. And you could see the traction control working there for JD Beach, what little they do run. That bike was a little bit sideways, but he stayed in it. Here comes Cameron Bobier. Does he have a run on him? Bobier in the draft. Side by side they go. What about the brake lever? He's laid on it, and Bobier goes to the lead. So now Cameron Bobier takes over the spot. JD Beach will have an opportunity to see what Cameron has, but all of that studying for these laps, Bobier is going to try to. Make the oh, most of the mistake. parts of the racetrack. That's from a mistake Bobier. from Cameron, Cameron Bobier there going into three. Just got in a little bit deep. Made him a little bit late on that left-hander. He's able to get it back under control and, and keep the point. But I kind of felt, uh, you know, this point last lap, I said that he might try to make a pass in the next two or three laps. I feel like Cameron thinks he might have a little bit of pace on JD. So we'll see if that holds true. And then we'll also see if that will, will separate the, uh, him from even that battle with uh, Matthew Skultz. We'll see if. Bobier can put together a series of laps here that's nice and tidy, mistake free. Very unusual for us to see this from Cam Bobier in the years we've been watching him race. Just small mistakes here and there, different racetracks. But now he's got a clear track in front of him. So he has his line choice and how he wants to run it. JD Beach had a good pace. This was that time, so it's 13 to go here. So what we know was what JD was talking about was about 10 laps into the race when his setup didn't allow his Dunlop tires to give him the maximum amount of grip. There's JD in the draft. JD is so good out of that last corner where it's important to be good. So and now look at Matthew Skultz. He has climbed up on the back of these guys. 22-1, 22-2 for the leaders. 21-8 for Matthew Skultz in third spot on that West Beach Yamaha R1. So this is going to do a lot for the confidence for Matthew and his team, seeing that he's been able to close that gap down. And now he's on the back of JD Beach. Stoltz hasn't won one this year, but he has two wins in EBC Break Superbike history. He knows how to win at this level. And now it's just going to be a matter of how comfortable is it that he can be sitting there. And I think that the reason why we saw the lap times in the 22s from Bobier and Beach was simply because of that small mistake that Cameron made going into 3A to 3B. Wouldn't be surprised to see those two front runners jump themselves back into the 21s this lap. You can see they kind of get away from Matthew in the first half of the track, and then Matthew kind of pulls him back all through here. So Cameron Bobier leads the way from JD Beach. For a moment, we saw Matthew Skultz join the party. How's this all going to play out? We have about halfway to go in this one. Fox Sports coverage of Moto America Superbike Racing from New Jersey Motorsports Park is brought to you by EBC Brakes, official brake pads of the 2019 Moto America Superbike Series. 11 laps remain of 23 as Cameron Bobier continues to lead the way from JD Beach and equidistant behind Cameron Bobier Beach is Matthew Skultz, Tony Elias. Five seconds adrift, Jake Lewis, Kyle Wyman, Jake Gagne, Josh Heron in eighth, David Anthony in ninth, Cam Peterson in tenth. But all eyes are on the front of this one. It's, it's, it's one of these situations, Jay, where you're saying, okay, Stoltz has made some lunges, got to the back, then all of a sudden, one lap later, he's a little further back. Yeah. Is that the pace, or is it him calming down? And what about J.D. Beach? Because Bobier is just putting this little tiny gap together. It's not growing necessarily, but it's a comfortable gap. Yeah, but where's J.D. the best? Right here. Last corner, all through here, all down this next little S section here. He's really, really good. And this is where Matthew's been pretty good also. What we're seeing right now, that last time through, is a 21-8 to a 22 flat from both J.D. Beach and uh, Matthew Skultz this time through as they come across the line. Good run by Beach on that one, Jason. You can see the yep. attitude of the motorcycle. He's so not, good. Not enough to make a pass, yep. but Cameron had to use so much more racetrack than JD did, but Bobier looks really strong into one. The battle for fourth place between Tony Elias, your championship points leader, and Jake Lewis continues to rage. And then there's a battle between Jake Gagne, the number 32 on the BMW, and Josh Heron on that factory Suzuki. Yeah, it's good to see Jake Gagne getting up to pace a little bit more. And 
Uh, he's got somebody to race with today in the fact that Josh Heron is there. I know this isn't where Josh wants to be, and we've seen both Yoshima and Suzuki's struggling just a little bit this weekend. But sometimes you just get weekends like this. But Jake Gagne, let's look at his fastest time so far, 21.7, Greg. He's fallen back now into the threes, the 23s. But uh, that Shivey BMW has definitely started to look better our last couple rounds. New Jersey Motorsports Park, the place where Jake Gagne wrapped up a Stock 1000 championship a few years ago in competition, likes this circuit and a very talented motorcycle rider, one of the most talented I've ever seen. The only road racer I know, mid-road race career, that qualified for a motocross outdoor national Unreal. race. Yeah. That much talent on a motorcycle, still coming back from injury, but he's riding his way back into fitness. And he's a tremendous rider, as you said. And here we go, J.D. Beach as back at the front against Cameron Bobier. So while we were just looking at that battle back there for seventh and eighth, these two guys have swapped it back up again. And I have no doubt, Greg, that that probably happened coming out of that last corner. As you saw back there, Matthew Skultz gets bucked up out of the seat out of turn two. So could this be some, some ideas that Hannah brought up at the start of the show about some tire wear? Yeah, that's really the big question. Is J.D. Beach all of a sudden has got the same amount of bike lengths on Cameron Bobby that Cameron Bobby had on him just one lap ago. So Beach, attack performance, Estenson Racing, Yamaha out front. And we haven't even really brought it up, Greg, but let's just talk about this for a minute. That's five extra points that Cameron Bobby has sitting in front of him. It's not so much even about a race win. Those 12 points that he would get if he was to win this race and Tony Elias was to finish fourth, that would be 19 points he would pick up on the weekend. So those five points are more than just a race win right now for Bobier. He's got to try to figure out a way to make this work. But J.D. Beach looks very, very hungry today. We've seen fireworks from Bobier on last laps of race before where he sets the fastest lap of the race on the last lap. You can see Beach yep. steering the rear end of the motorcycle with the throttle. And that's why we've seen it consistently right there. Now let's look at look at how fast Cameron is through the middle, but look at the exit speed of J.D. Beach on the exit. It's almost so much, it makes it difficult for Bobier to go back down up underneath him. And he's gonna try anyways, Greg. Oh, oh there goes Bobier. That seemed to be out of nowhere. Long it didn't even way look back. like he had position on him. But Bobier is so strong on the brakes in turn number one and lead change again. And that was from a long way back. Uh, that, a that, long way back. Yeah, and that's just having the confidence. And we've seen him up there in there a couple times this weekend where he runs a little bit wide. And look at the gap that he immediately opens up. Maybe he heard us talking about the points. Yeah, yeah, Could have been something. Maybe. <laughs> so Bobier knows what's at stake. He has those conversations with his crew. And riding coach Jake Zemke before he gets to the race, J.D. Beach not wanting to let Bobier get away and lose his opportunity to win a race, I think, Maybe a bit of a surprise how deep Cameron went in on the brakes and was able to make turn one. We've seen Cam go in that deep before, but then kind of run it wide and have to get out of the curb and roll off the gas. But so far, so tidy for Bobier with eight laps to go. Looking good, but Beach is not giving up. Nope, he's not giving up. And you can see the pace at 22.0, 22.1 has just broken Matthew Skultz back there a little bit in third. Matthew, that last time by was a 22.6. So these guys were a little over half a second quicker than the number 11 of Matthew Skultz, who's still trying as desperately to hang on to these front two guys because if they engage at all and get into each other's way, he can still be there. And further back, you can see them coming onto the front straightaway is gonna be Tony Elias and Jake Lewis. That lap through, Cameron Bobier back into the 21s at 21.9, and it looks like Tony Elias has broken away a little bit from Jake Lewis. Yeah, Elias doing a time of a 122.3, so just a tenth quicker than Matthew Skultz. The, the gap from Elias to Skultz is 5.5 seconds, and then it's 1.1 back to Lewis from Elias right now. All right, so here we go up front. Cameron Bobier, after that last pass, got about three or four or five bike lengths. He's starting to eke it out. But it's been an accordion effect here, especially in the latter part of the racetrack, where J.D. Beach really comes on strong. Jason, I would say the exit of 10 through 11, 11A, and onto the front straightaway. Yep, I what, think you're right, yeah. The, the question is, is it too much of a gap at this point? I, I mean, if you lose the draft here on the straightaway, is it going to be disaster? It's not disaster, no. And J.D.'s closing that gap back down, and <laughs> you're going to see that these guys both, I, it, I really feel that you're exactly right, Greg. From about this point on to the start-finish line is where we've seen J.D. really excel. His bike looks like it handles very nicely through here. Cameron runs it in here a little bit deeper, a little bit tighter on his entry, but J.D. kills it on the exit. Look at the speed that he closes up on the oh exit. Oh, my goodness. Here comes J.D. Beach. 
He was that far back, and now he's within a bike length. But it's on the brakes in turn one. Look at the gap that Bobier is able to create just on the brakes. Up over the crest of the hill into turn three they go. Both bikes look stable, even they just do. late. That's what Jason and I are looking at tire wear, because if there's too much spin, you're going to see the bike start to move around quite a bit. But they still look very, very good. And Matthew Scalt uh, responded that time with a 22-1 as well. So you're looking at 22-3, 22-1, 22-1 for the top three. So they're still circulating in and around the same lap time. So really great. It's going to come down to uh, to mistake, tire wear. It could be any one of those things. But JD is very strong and in a, in a spot that I think is the most important spot to be uh, fast in, that last corner on the run to the flag. Your number one plate, Cameron Bovier, trying to hold on to his number one for 2020. He's got to get maximum points here. Tony Elias in four spot is having a point-saving championship-style race at this point. He's got the best bike he possibly can get. That's all he's going to be able to do. We, we knew last night when we went off the air, we were talking about that gap, and we said there's no way he's going to find 15 seconds to find it. And right now, Tony has. He's bridged that gap to seven seconds from first to where he's at. But that's still a big gap there. And you can see these guys back in the 21s to 22 flat for Cameron. And you're right, Greg. He does pull quite a bit of distance there. And there's the points. If we were to end the race right now, Tony Elias' points gap is down to 16. So after a full year of racing, it could come down to 16 points at Barber Motorsports Park in two weeks. So Tony Elias trying to hold on to fourth place and reduce the damage that Cameron Bobier is going to do in this championship with a little bit of a miscue. Cam Bobier still leads the way here in race number two of the EBC Brakes Superbike Moto America. Bobier Jason has gapped JD Beach another 10 bike lengths or so. Yeah, he's got to wait just a little bit. Looking at those first splits, they're still kind of the same. Our second splits are going to be coming up. And you can see it is a half a second between them as they run right now. But this is where JD, again, is very strong. Down through here. Yeah, but Bobier looks in control of this race. Now it looks like he's kind of settled in to a mistake-free race. So far, so good for Bobier. You can see that race pace on the right side of our screen. You can look at those lap times and the consistency that there is. But you can hear how Lady is on the gas even coming out of that last corner, Greg, and that's where JD's been making up all that time. So look, on our screen right now, we can see the last split. 12.7 was Cameron Bobby. It says 12.7 seconds. JD Beach is 12.4. So gaining three tenths just on that last little short split. That three tenths is a lot of time in that in that short of a split, Greg. Yeah, but in order for JD Beach to really take advantage of that last second, he's got to be on the rear wheel of Bobier with four to go in this one. Beach is going to have to dig deep and measure the risk and reward for this one. Matthew Skoltz starting to drift out of our picture now 2.2 seconds behind J.D. Beach. There he was just flashing through the screen and you don't see a Tony Elias back there just yet. He's there, but he's still five seconds behind Skoltz and with four laps to go, Elias would have to dig pretty deep into the toolbox if he was going to get up on the podium in this one. What was interesting in talking to Tony Elias' crew chief, Jason, from Yoshimura Suzuki was they are a little baffled about the way the bike has gone for Tony because they've been making advancements to the motorcycle, which has worked in some places, but they find that they're one second a lap slower this year than they were last year. Yeah, but we haven't figured that part out. That's just a strange uh, a deal that we've never, I can't honestly say that we've seen from Yoshi. You can see P1 plus 0 0.3 as they come across the line this lap. 21.9 again to 22 flat for J.D. Beach. So he's still hanging in there. Still two tenths quicker that last split. That's where it's happening. So Cameron's just eking out three, four tenths in the first part of the lap. That last 12 seconds, J.D.'s got it licked. But uh, but it's really odd to see Yosh this far back at this place. And they got to hope that when they go to Barber, they don't have the same problems. This is a good slow motion camera from our guys out there in the turn nine to turn 10 area and different riding styles, positions on the motorcycle. Yeah, very. They, both guys, though, they, they operate in a small window on top of the bike, and you're going to see here, where even when you look at JD, that, that we talked about that um, the thing that they've taken off the tank to push JD's weight back. He wanted it off so he could get more of his weight forward, and there's that gap, Greg, that you talked about early in the lap. 
So it's about a half a second. The interesting thing is at certain parts of the racetrack, Jay, like you're talking about with the sector splits, we see a half a second gap from Bobier to Beach. But when they come across the line, it's like down to three tenths of a second. Correct. But Bobier is doing it where he needs to at this point, which is get as much time as he can in the first, second, and third sectors of New Jersey Motorsports Park. And JD is he's throwing the kitchen sink at it, and you can see that Skultz has settled into that third place spot at the moment, losing six tenths. Across the line, two to go now for Bobier. The gap up to four tenths of a second at start finish line. And you can see on the graphic, it says six tenths of a second because that was that gap before start finish line. So it keeps going back and forth. Yeah, but you're right. I think Cameron, you know, he's just trying to hit his marks now. We've seen Cameron so frustrated from Sonoma all the way through. You know, we saw him win the second race there, tip off in the first, frustration at Pittsburgh, a little probably frustration yesterday. So Cameron Bobia is just definitely due a win right now. JD Beach is keeping him honest. I think that even before the race, we kind of said that this could be a Cameron Bobia walk away, and JD Beach has done everything he can to thwart that. But Cameron right now is riding like we've seen him ride so many times, hitting those marks nice and consistent, and being smooth doing it. This is Cameron Bobier as we know it. A lot of talks about what Cameron's got to be doing for 2020. Will he stay here in Moto America? Murmurs of World Superbike possibilities over there as well. The future is bright for this young man, Cameron Bobier out of California, as he is working the final section of this racetrack. JD Beach's strength, he's got enough of a gap right now to hold off JD Beach. But Cameron still has, well, they say 12 corners, Jason, on this racetrack, yeah. but there's 3B, 3C, there's it's an 11A. Like 16, but yeah. Yeah, it's more Last like 16. Lap. Last lap for Cameron Bobier. Trying to grab as many points as he can and put them in his pocket as he heads to Barber Motorsports Park. And how about this guy, Matthew Skultz, after a couple of fifth place finishes, trying to put his Westby Racing Yamaha back on the podium. Some traffic ahead for Bobier. Gets out of the way is Max Flinders, the 88. He knows the deal, so Flinders rolls out of it. Leaves it to these two. Beach not giving up, but he also knows what he's got in his pocket. Another podium appearance for J.D. Beach. This could be his second in a row on this final lap. Jason Cameron Bobier looks to be in control of his own destiny. Still was another 21-8 from the champ running that last lap, still consistently running in the high 21s. J.D. Beach has ran so many 22 flats this race, but you can see that gap is now stretched out quite well. And it looks like Cameron Bobby is finally going to get this win that we that I feel like he could have had <laughs> in any one of the last three weekends, two weekends. Here comes Cameron Bobier through the final corner here at New Jersey Motorsports Park. He's going to streak to the line, get after that checkered flag, and take the win. EBC breaks Superbike race number two with J.D. Beach 1.4 seconds behind. As we await the arrival, there he is. Matthew Skultz will stand on the podium for the Westby Racing team, and he is pumped, yeah, and why wouldn't he be? And you know, the thing that you can look at there, even with, for Matthew, is you know seven seconds from, from winning the race. That's a, that's a really good job from the, the Westby crew. Great job from the attack. Uh, crew as well with J.D. Beach and of course Cameron Bobia. that's going to be a big win you can see Tony Elias is there he's going to be the first one to go up and congratulate Cameron Bobia. and another Yamaha sweep here at New Jersey Motorsports Park pretty classy stuff from Tony Elias knowing that he's given up 19 points but uh, yeah that's a, it's a big weekend for this guy so 12 points in this race the difference between Cam Bobier and Tony Elias with my rudimentary math that's going to take us to a points deficit of right around 16. <laughs> 16 yeah. points. There were different times of this year where we thought, uh-oh, is this championship going Correct. to be a breakout? Is it going to be tight? But the way things are shaping up, Jason, and let's, let's keep in mind, we're heading to a freshly paved Barber Motorsports Park. It's an unloan. Dunlop is there yesterday, today, and Monday they're going to be testing tires with Taylor Knapp. One rider who's been setting track records all around the country. He's going to be testing Fort Dunlop to find the durability of the tires for Barber Motorsports Park so they can gather as much information as possible. We have in the past gone to 
freshly paved yeah, racetracks that have. have just eaten tires alive. Just chewed them away. Exactly. So Dunlop's on the case, and they're going to spread out the information to the teams. No, that's good that they're down there doing that. Good, good to see that there's a couple riders down there testing those tires so that when we get down there in two weeks, you know, and, and no matter what, Greg, it's, it's, it, could be, it could be raining, it could be hot. We'll just have to wait and see. But now this championship is blown wide open. Kyle Wyman in the picture. He'll finish sixth on the day. It was a good start for Kyle Wyman on the Ducati. Very aggressive moves to put himself into third early. Here's a look, Jason, at one of the passes for the lead. The final pass for the lead, I would have to imagine, in this one is Bobier. He just seemed to have such great confidence on the front end heading into turn number one. You know what I love about watching Cam Bobier make passes like this? I want you to see the amount of distance he gives J.D. Beach going into here. Look how much of a gap that actually is. That's that's probably four or five bike lengths. He doesn't go in there and skim him or do anything like that. He's going to the apex of the corner, but he gives him a wide berth. And those two guys both race each other very, very clean, as they would. Both know each other very well. But that's a big win, and it couldn't come at a better time for Cameron Bobier and that whole factory Yamaha crew. The fastest lap of the race was set on lap two by J.D. Beach, a 120.7. After 23 laps on those Dunlop tires, Bobier is able to finish it off his last lap at a 21.9. Incredible lap time deep in the race as Bobier rolls his Monster Energy Yamaloop Yamaha Factory Racing R1 into winner's circle. Congratulations all the way around. So how about it, Jason? Looking at these results, we have a factory Yamaha on top of the box, followed by two privateer. Yamaha's, a factory Suzuki and Tony Elias, and the privateer Suzuki and Jake Lewis to top five. And of course, that V4R of Kyle Wyman, great result ahead of Josh Heron, Jake Gagne, and David Anthony. With not a uh, drama free weekend for <laughs> no, David Anthony. Not at all. Yeah, a motor expired on him earlier on yesterday and was able to get that bike back up and a good points collection for the Australian American. Yeah. He's Australian, but you know what I mean? He's also lives in the United States, David Anthony. On back through the field, you had Cam Peterson, Travis Wyman, and Max Flinders. So Jason, what do you think about uh, about the way the race unfolded today with the exit of Garrett Gerloff earlier today? Well, I think Cameron Bobby and that factory Yamaha team are probably gonna share a few beers with J.D. Beach's crew and Matthew Skoltz because they needed to put some people between uh, Cameron Bobby and Tony Elias. Obviously, our thoughts are with Garrett Gerloff today as well. Hoping he's feeling a little better and he'll be all right for Barber as well. So for Cameron Bobier, his fourth win of the season. When we come back, we'll get a chance to talk to him and find out how his race went. Fox Sports coverage of Moto America Superbike Racing from New Jersey Motorsports Park has been brought to you by Dunlop, the official tire of the 2019 Moto America Championship. We're back at New Jersey Motorsports Park for our post-race coverage of the EBC Brakes Superbike Race Number 2 with Cameron Bobier taking victory by 1.4 seconds over J.D. Beach. And Hannah is down, obviously, with our top three. Hannah? Cam, J.D. led you around for quite a few laps. Watching him, how are you able to, to, to determine when and where to make your move so that it sticks? Yeah, at the, at the beginning, I tried to make a pretty good push like, uh, like I did yesterday, and I just didn't have it. I think the track was a little hotter, and uh, yeah, for whatever reason, I wasn't going anywhere. I was spinning up. I was like, oh, man, this is going to be a tough fight with J.D. because I, uh, I know how good of a racer he is. Um, but it felt so good to... Uh, to get this one done, it's more of a relief than anything because uh, we've been kind of on the back foot all year and it feels so good every time we win. So it just puts everything back into perspective. So big thanks to my Mantra Energy Yamalube Yamaha team, um, Bell, Alpine Stars, and Manaba for keeping me safe. And uh, yeah, we had three three Yamahas on the box both days and I think it's a testament to how good this R1 is. So uh, yeah, big thanks to my team, big thanks to all the fans for coming out and uh, see you guys in Barber. Looking ahead to Barber, how do you think the Yamaha suits that track? I think really well. Um, it's going to be a dogfight too. I, I think uh, we're only 16 points out now, so just keep grinding. And uh, like I said before the race, 
I'm uh, bummed Garrett wasn't out there because he's been on rails all weekend, and there would have been another Yamaha in the mix. So, uh, so bummed for him, but uh, he'll be back in Barber, and we'll be ready to go. Thanks, Cam. That's what it is, Jason. It's, you know what I mean, rise and grind for Cameron Bobier at this point. No question, and we've seen some of the frustration. I've actually really felt the frustration from him, and his riding coach, Jake Zemke, a good friend of mine, I've talked to him a little bit about some of the stuff, and it's just, just being in the right place at the right time, but continuously putting yourself in the position to win is what this guy does. And yeah, he's been beat a couple times this year. He's made a couple small errors. But look, Greg, it's only 16 points now as we go into the final race. Yeah, and even with someone who's won three national titles and more than that, really, in other classes, and yes. the amount of race wins that Cameron Bobier has, every now and then you need a little bit of a confidence <laughs> boost. And speaking of confidence boost, how about Hannah with J.D. Beach? I'm sure he's riding high. J.D., yesterday you mentioned that the bike setup didn't quite allow you to maximize the, t the tire potential. Was that a factor in today's race? Yeah, I mean, you know what, just a little bit. I mean, the bike was a lot better today. And, uh, I mean, I, I just got to th uh, thank the whole uh, attack uh, performance S and uh, racing team. And they've been working so hard. And, I mean, the, the, the bike was awesome. And Cameron was riding so good. And uh, I, I've been waiting a long time to, bat to mm, battle with him. And it, it was fun. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it was just like a mm, great race. And, uh, I, and, and and I hope uh, Gar Garrett's okay. That 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 sucked to see to see to see him crash this morning, but uh, I, I'm sure he'll be back for Barber, and it's going to be a fun weekend. Congratulations, JD Beach. Yeah, pumped. I mean, back to back obviously. podiums for two days in a row. Really nice work, and JD's had some struggles the last two or three rounds. So, congrats to the whole attack team for putting a bike underneath him and showing his uh, showing his talent, getting up on the box twice. I'm sure he's got a dirt track next weekend or something, or something. doesn't he? Yeah, yeah probably. Got, yeah, race <laughs> week. One of the things Richard Stamboli from the team talked to me about, Jason, was smooth asphalt can actually create more chatter mm, because yep. when it's actually bumpy, you don't notice it as much, but it's that front wheel, that front tire that's going to skip across the pavement trying to find grip. So it's going to be very interesting to see if J.D. Beach and his team show up and have a motorcycle that works as good as it worked here at Barber Motorsports Park. And if it does, J.D. Beach could be a factor in how this no championship question. ends up. Yeah, there's a lot of guys that can that can really help in this championship. Let's get back down to Hannah. Matt, trying really hard to hang on to J.D. and Cam out front. How were you able to kind of manage that gap for most of the race? Um, the, the first couple of corners were a little bit hectic. I was tangling with, you know, Lewis and Kyle Wyman and stuff like that. So it was a... a a uh, fun first, uh, first, first few corners there, but then I kind of got up to third, and you know I didn't really think I'd be able to 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 catch JD and Cam, but you know fortunately I was reeling them in slowly, but like you know as soon as I kind of got there, I would mess up somewhere, I would drop back, I catch up, mess up, so you know towards the the, the last eight eight or so laps, I was on the ragged edge, so I kind of had to back off slightly, but. You know, from the first race to now, the bike, I mean, the, the team have improved the bike so much. You know, the Westbrook guys have been working so hard. It hasn't really been the season that we have uh, hoped for, but it seems like things are really coming together nicely now. So, and, you know, uh, we have the final round at Bob in two weeks, and that's my uh, favorite track. Always seems to go well there. So, hopefully finish off the 2019 season strong and give the Westby boys uh, two more podiums, hopefully. You know, um, I know that my, my dad and my fiance are watching back home. I just want to say hi, and I love you guys. Cheers. Thank you to everyone. Congratulations to our third place finisher, Matthew Skoltz. His fourth podium of the season, two seconds, two thirds, Jason. And yeah, he, he won a race. It, there can be weather at Barber. Yeah, he won a, he won a race it. on a super stock bike, bike, right? Stock bike I stole your thunder. Ago. Sorry about that. Yeah, you were yep. exactly right. Yep. I stole it. Sorry. Yeah, he no, did no, a fine. super yeah. stock bike. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, but yeah, no, we know it's his favorite track, and it's a place that I think he'll shine at. And this, hey. You get a podium and you roll into the next race, it's going to give him a lot of confidence. And the question becomes for the racers that are starting to show a lot of speed here in the last round with this championship, it's a battle not only between riders but manufacturers. And there's a lot more tuning forks that are up front than there are Suzuki's at the moment. But Tony leads this championship with 333 points. Bobier told us what the spread is, 16. There's only 50 points remaining in this championship, Jason. So only Tony Elias or Cameron Bobier can wrap up the 2019 EBC Brakes Superbike title. Okay, we're going to a commercial break. When we come back, there's more coming at you from New Jersey Motorsports Park here in Millville. So don't go anywhere.